Politico wrote a hilariously stupid hatchet job on the populist left, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you here. So it says, Are Democrats headed for a McGovern redux? As Trump continues his Nixonian campaign of white cultural grievance politics, Democrats appear consumed by the same squabbles that destroyed them in 1972. Four decades ago, Richard Nixon lived out the fantasy many liberals harbor about Donald Trump, stepping down in the face of impossible of, of possible excuse me impeachment over a slow-moving scandal long before his term was up. Before that happened, however, Nixon was re-elected by a resounding margin, in large part because progressives made strategic errors that Democrats today appear hell-bent on repeating. In 1968, as in 2016, Democrats narrowly lost the White House uh, after nominating a relatively moderate establishment candidate instead of a more liberal alternative who had inspired a raging enthusiasm among young voters. Democrats spent much of the next four years arguing about what direction the party should take. White working class voters, traditionally a Democratic bloc, were, I don't know what that word is, slewicking? Slewicing away? And progressives convinced the party needed to change both its policy direction and its coalition of supporters, demanded a new approach. A loose peace coalition of minorities, young voters, and educated white Democrats, as strategist Fred Dutton wrote in his 1971 book, Changing Sources of Power. One year later, the party's presidential nominee, the ultra-liberal Senator George McGovern of South Dakota, went on to lose 49 states in one of the most lopsided victories in American history. We're a long way from 2020, but it's abundantly evident that Trump will again run a Nixonian campaign, tearing down his opponent and presenting himself as the champion of an aggrieved coalition that Nixon called the silent majority and Trump calls the forgotten men and women of America. Consumed by internecine uh, battles and the idea of opposition, Democrats run the risk of again nominating someone like McGovern, who pleases progressives, but steers a course too far from the country's center of political gravity to win, even as Trump continues his funhouse mirror impression of Nixon as the avatar of white cultural grievance politics. Okay, so let me just pause. You can already see the narrative that they're weaving. Well, hey! Sure, the Democrats have run people in the past who young people are excited about, but they always lose when they run those people. And sure, we could pick somebody who pleases progressives, but when you pick somebody who pleases progressives, you're too far from the center to win. They make the same point over and over, and they think it's original, and they think it's, it's correct. And of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Let's continue, and then at the end, we'll break it down. Like Bernie Sanders, oh, there it is, and his supporters today, progressives headed into the 1972 cycle uh, complained about the Democratic Party itself and the way its nominating rules were set against insurgents. Back then, the complaints arguably had greater merit. All the while, the Democratic Party became increasingly comfortable embracing hard left positions, pushed in large part by the same forces demanding a change to the nomination process. By the time of the 1972 Democratic National Convention, the party's platform was perhaps further left than it had ever been, calling for, among other planks, a decent job for every American and income supports for those out of work as well as universal single-payer health care system. All right, let's pause. He's bringing this up in a scornful way. Like, ah, this, that platform. Platform is so far left. I mean, look, they wanted, uh, they wanted a decent job for every American. Ha! Huh! Assholes. Uh, they wanted basically unemployment insurance. Ooh, how radical, unemployment insurance. They wanted, uh, uh single-payer health care. He's bringing this up to say, <laughs> see? We tried to run on these, like, unquestionably good ideas before, and it didn't work. You know what's hilarious? He's bringing up McGovern as his, see, that doesn't work, argument. You ever heard of somebody called FDR? The guy who got reelected about 9,312 times, 
and then made the Republicans go, shit, we need term limits. Because whenever we actually elect a social Democrat, Americans like them so much that they don't want to vote them out of office. And so the Republicans were like, we need term limits. Can't have, I mean, more than two terms is crazy. I mean, this FDR guy just kept getting elected. I mean, he's too fucking popular to beat because he keeps pushing for good ideas. Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's get, let's do term limits. See what happens when you elect a social Democrat. I mean, so popular they invented term limits after he passed away. So he uses the, uh, the McGovern argument instead of the FDR argument because the FDR argument definitively proves him wrong. And FDR was even further left than this. FDR with his, you know, his new Bill of Rights where, uh, you know, he went down the list and it was basically like, hey, let's make the United States of America a, a Scandinavian type system. That's what he was arguing for. And he kept getting re-elected. Because people went, I like this guy. I think he's looking out for me. So, this author is scornfully writing about, <laughs> like, people like a, a decent job for everybody American and single-payer health care. Have you heard of this thing called polls? Okay, we'll, we'll hold on that. Let's continue. He says, the party's presidential nominee would be the same man who'd been tapped to overhaul the nominating process, George McGovern, whose candidacy was a backlash against 1968 and the old Democratic machine politics, says University of Minnesota political scientist Lawrence Jacobs. McGovern won the battle, but lost the working class. He was never able to escape Nixon's characterizations of him as a supporter of liberal causes, like forced busing to integrate schools, misrepresenting... Uh, McGovern's positions to some extent, Nixon tarred the Democrat as the candidate of acid, amnesty, and abortion. Amnesty in those days referred to forgiveness for draft dodgers, not undocumented immigrants. Nixon's promise to promote the work ethic, uh, Nixon promised to promote the work ethic, not the welfare ethic. Okay, so let, let's, let's understand, uh, what they're saying here. First of all, I love how that's portrayed as, like, radical and dumb. Like, oh, he doesn't want to jail people who didn't want to go to the war. <laughs> like, like, wow, how unreasonable of him to support freedom. And then, I mean, he opposed, uh, he opposed, George McGovern opposed segregation and was for integration. Yeah, and today everybody would look at that and go, that guy was right, and people who were against him were wrong. But that's not, okay, George McGovern, at that time in American history, you have to understand that the young people were going through, it was the hippie movement. It was that everybody was like, yeah, woo, toot, to, what, what the fuck is the saying? Tune in, turn on, drop out or some shit. Like, in other words, yeah, the system's so bullshit. I don't even want to get a job, bro. Woo, let's just do drugs all day and fucking not bathe and shit. Woo. So, yes, there was this growing movement of hippies, if you will that so totally rejected the mainstream of America and the way things were going, but that was a radical departure from, you know, society before then. So, you, yes, you did have the, the people, I go to work, I have a 9 to 5, I wear my, uh, my suit and tie, and I sit there at the, at the breakfast table, and I have my paper here, and I have the milkman comes, and my wife cooks me my food, and it's, there's a white picket fence, and a dog, and two kids, and it's the American dream. So there was this giant dichotomy in the country of the real button-down, traditional, if you will, people, and the young up-and-coming radicals who said, fuck everything, the way you do everything. So, it is true that at the time, the Democrats were more in bed with the so-called hippie movement. And policy aside, so in other words, when the Democrats called for, hey, a decent job for people, or unemployment insurance, or universal health care, policy aside, the American majority said, I don't know, I think you, these hippies are weird and you shouldn't be in bed with them. So, in other words, the social issues was the dividing line in the American public. And you had a candidate like McGovern who was viewed as, yes, on the side of the hippies, if you will. So they rejected him and went with Nixon. 
but that is to say nothing of the economic policies that he was pushing for. So what this author is misleadingly doing is saying, well, Americans weren't in favor of a decent job for everybody. Americans weren't in favor of unemployment insurance and universal health care. Or they would have voted for McGovern. Or the American people, when you look at the polls, they are in favor of the economic ideas pushed by a candidate like McGovern, but they rejected him because of the social issues and because it felt like a radical change and they wanted to stick with that traditional feeling America and they tolerated the more backwards economic policies. Now, that is my theory. People can accept or reject that theory, but here's the fact of the situation. When you look at the polls, it proves my theory. So, if this guy was right, what kind of candidate should we run? Well, obviously, you, he even brought it up in the first paragraph. You run a respectable establishment candidate. And if you have a respectable Democratic establishment candidate, obviously you can't lose. That's his solution. That's what we got with Hillary Clinton, you dumbass. And Hillary Clinton lost to a comical figure. Why did she lose to this reality star buffoon? Because the reality star buffoon at least had the fake populism. So populism is the real deciding factor here. That's the real deciding factor. So when you look at the polls, 61% of the American people want Medicare for all. 58% of the American people want free college. 80% of the American people want a living wage. Only 17% of the American people still want to be in Afghanistan and doing all these wars. So when you look at the polls, the populist left is the center of the country, is the mainstream. So all the Democrats need is a candidate that is populist left and not overtly hippie, if you will. So... That's the solution. I mean, he acts like we don't have the immediate evidence of the 2016 election that proves our point. That Hillary Clinton lost to the most disliked candidate in U.S. history. He had a 60% unfavorability rating on election day, and he won. What does that tell you? That tells you that in today's day and age, there's a giant backlash against the establishment and the status quo. Hillary represented the establishment and the status quo. And your solution is, let's run another establishment candidate because, I don't know, George McGovern or something. So it's a fundamental misreading of American politics. Because again, two main points prove him wrong. FDR, Social Democrats, so popular, he died in office and he kept getting reelected and they invented term limits because they knew that, hey, if we elect another Social Democrat, we'll be, the Republican Party will be fucked because they'll be so popular we'll never get elected again. FDR proves him wrong, proves how popular populist leftism is, and Hillary Clinton proves him wrong, wrong because the establishment uh, candidate lost. The person who did not run on populist left policies uh, got beaten. And then, of course, the third point is just that the polls prove him wrong. And when you look at the polls, people love populist left ideas. So the idea is to marry a populist left candidate with also, by the way, somebody who's genuinely likable. McGovern just wasn't likable. Like there's sometimes people come along and they're right on the issues and then they're just fucking, for whatever reason, they just don't click. There's not a thing where people go, oh, I kind of like that guy. There's the thing where people go, ugh. So that's also another part of this, the intangible part of this, of just the X factor. Is, is he this person likable or not likable? Why, why not? Um, so... The main point of this piece is, don't go with Bernie Sanders! Don't go with Bernie Sanders! Don't go with any populist left candidate. This guy would probably throw in Tulsi Gabbard and Elizabeth Warren and people like that into the same category. Don't go with them! Because, oh my god, we'll lose so bad, we'll lose so- We'll just run another establishment candidate and we'll win, even though the establishment candidates just got wiped out. Over a thousand of them got wiped out under Obama. So, his solution has- it's been proven to fail, um, but he wants to try it again.